if you're somebody that follows this channel with any regularity, you know that I'm a huge fan of the 80s rack reverbs, like the classic Lexicon PCM era reverbs. And I've done videos where I evangelize what I consider to be some of the best pedal-based reverbs ever made. One of those reverbs is the Digitech or Hardwire RV7, which actually has a Lexicon chip that's built into it because Digitech was under the umbrella of its parent company, Harman, which also owned Lexicon. So they were able to collaborate and create this amazing reverb pedal that has Lexicon algorithms inside of it very similar to what you would have found in the 80s rack units. However, some of the feedback that you guys gave about those videos, about the Lexicon reverbs, and again, some of the pedal-based versions like Supernatural and Polara, which were kind of offshoots that came of the RV7, is that it didn't have MIDI control, didn't have any ability to do presets. There wasn't an easy way to switch between all the different kind of reverb algorithms that were built into the pedal. So it got me thinking that there must be pedals out there that can do this. And it wasn't one of the obvious ones that everybody gets. I mean, everybody loves the Strymon Big Sky and a lot of those products which have MIDI. But in my mind, they don't really resemble the classic 80s digital rack reverbs. They are kind of their own thing. And, and there's also obviously modern reverbs that maybe claim to arc back to early Lexicon stuff. But they are sort of divorced from how guitar was recorded with digital rack reverbs. And, you know, if you want your guitar to sound like it was on Blade Runner, that's one thing, but that's not really the historical context for where we heard reverb used on hit records. So I sought to find a digital reverb that could actually do it, and I found one. And today is going to be all about evangelizing that reverb pedal as one of the best ones out there if you want some of the sounds that you heard from my other videos with the RV7, but want some of those modern amenities like MIDI and presets. And it's none other than the Source Audio Ventress Reverb. And just to give you a real quick overview, because I'm sure that there's a million videos that probably go into this in greater detail, it has the 128 MIDI presets, it has 12 different reverb algorithms, and it has two reverb engines in one pedal, which means that you can set two separate reverbs, one to go out one channel and one to go out the other channel. You can also have those reverbs be mixed in parallel and use that in stereo. It also does kill dry, which means it can go 100% wet, which is great if you want to use it in a wet dry wet context. And because it has an analog dry through, you don't have to worry about any sort of latency related issues associated with using it in the kill dry setting. Another thing that I think is worth noting or is remarkable about this pedal is that it was designed by Bob Chidlaw. And if you know who Bob Chidlaw is, he's one of the foremost engineers at Kurzweil. And while at Kurzweil, they were creating some amazing digital replications of a lot of the kind of current or of the generation sounds that you might have heard in something like a Lexicon rack reverb and making that available as part of the units that he was designing at Kurzweil. Fast forward now that he's with Source Audio, he's taken sort of the, the bulk and breadth of knowledge understanding a lot of those classic reverb sounds that were in demand during that time in the 80s and reincorporating that into the Source Audio Ventress, which has many of those classic sort of reverb sounds that you might find in an 80s digital rack reverb. And I found that this pedal absolutely nails it. And I want to not just tell you, but I want to show you what this pedal does. And in order to do that, I brought in my friend Ben Forehand. Ben Forehand is not only a session player, but also plays live with various different artists from secular music to praise and worship music and is touring hundreds of dates every year and doing hundreds of sessions. And I wanted to bring him here because he can really help emphasize and demonstrate what these sounds do and how they were used in the context of some kind of classic recordings and guitar tones of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where you might have heard some of these classic lexicon reverbs used in practice. And again, like we did on the RV7 video, we're gonna stick to sort of core reverb sounds that you would ordinarily hear used on guitar tracks. So things like spring reverb, room reverb, hall, and plate. There are, of course, many other things that this pedal can do and that a lot of digital reverb pedals can do, but we're going to restrict it to what we ordinarily hear in the context of guitar recordings and hit records and how these might apply to those particular types of sound. But before we go any further, 
into the demonstration. I want to remind people that only about 20% of you that are watching any given week are actually subscribed to the channel. So this is a great time to double check that you're subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date on new videos that are coming out like this every single week. Now back to the Source Audio Ventress. So for the setup today, to demonstrate these sounds, we're gonna be running through Ben's stereo pedal board. We're gonna be using the Source Audio Ventress exclusively on all the clips to demonstrate the different sounds, hall, room, plate, and spring. We're gonna be pairing that sometimes with some overdrive devices and also sometimes with some modulation devices to kind of arc back to some of the classic tones that we're trying to recreate. Again, where you would have heard these reverbs used in context. We're gonna use stereo amplifiers. On the right side, we're gonna have the Doctor Special Amplifier. It's a clean 50 watt platform based on a steel string singer with some of my tweaks. On the other side, we're gonna have a Hot Rod DeVille ML also a very clean, approximately 50 watt clean amp. They're gonna be hard pan left and right in the mix. So if you're listening to these on headphones or on monitors, you'll be able to make those distinctions as far as the sound of the reverb and how the amps are participating. We're gonna use various guitars to kind of help illustrate some of those sounds ranging from Telecasters to Strats to Super Strats to a PRS, depending on the example today. And I'll walk through the specific signal path as we migrate through each sound. Also, every sound that we capture today is going to be available as part of the Neuro community. There's an app that goes along with all source audio products called the Neuro app. It's available on your phone as well as on your desktop, and you're able to recall community submitted presets. We're going to submit all of them today. I'll leave the names for each preset based on the type of reverb. I'll also show a picture above as we go through each one of these reverb settings so you can see exactly how it's named so that you can incorporate this into your Ventress if you have one already or you're considering buying one you can upload these exact same presets that we're using today that we've created specifically for this video. So let's get into the guitar playing. To start first, we're gonna use Room Reverb. And for this example, we're gonna go with the Jeff Buckley song, Hallelujah. And I know, although it's a Leonard Cohen song originally, I think it was most popularized by the application of Jeff Buckley using a telly and using some beautiful Room Reverbs. And there's some great videos actually showing how this was recorded. And we're gonna try to recapture some of that room sound that Jeff Buckley had with his telly. Very simple, have the telly going in to the Source Audio Ventress in stereo, stereo out into the two amps, hard pan left and right. Let's hear how it sounds. So absolutely sounds amazing, really nails and captures the sound of that original recording of Hallelujah from Jeff Buckley, again, re-recording that classic Leonard Cohen song, and really just sounds amazing. We were able to sort of tweak the room to a degree to kind of get it to sound somewhat like Jeff Buckley. He's got a little bit more of a darker sound, so I think Ben rolled back the tone control a little bit to try to emulate some of that stuff. And of course, there are things that you can do with this pedal beyond what's on the face of it. If you go into the Neuro app, you can start to manipulate even more parameters to really dive in the exact room sound that you want and again if you want this room sound to incorporate into your Ventress we again have that available for download as part of the Neuro app community 
It's available for free. We'll also have it in the description below so you know exactly how to search for it if you wanna, again, use this on your Ventress or you wanna buy one and upload this to it. Let's go to the next sound. And in this example, we're gonna go for a plate reverb sound. And this is really consistent with a lot of kind of maybe harder edge rock music. Van Halen, of course, was known to use the plate reverb on a lot of their recordings. And in this particular example, we're gonna be going with a Steve Perry track off of the Street Talk album. And it's a song called You Should Be Happy. And it's a good mixture of taking some clean sounds with maybe a little bit larger plate reverb and then consolidating it to a little tighter drier plate sound when it goes to some of the more distortion sounds so it's again big plate when it's clean and then goes to a little bit tighter less mix when it goes to some of the distortion sound and gets kind of more of those harder edge rock type tones so we're going to start first with it nice and big we're going to be using a boss dc2w that's going to be feeding into the source audio of interest to add a little modulation to it which is consistent with the clean sound from that album and then when we switch over to the distortion tone we're going to use a vertex ultraphonics overdrive and that's going to then feed directly into the source audio of interest again still in stereo just no chorus for the distortion parts and we're going to kind of tighten up that mix so that it gets a little bit more kind of in form for that kind of harder edge distortion sound so let's bring ben back in he's going to be using a tom anderson super strat for this and again same amp setup hard panned and again with the pedals that we talked about for the overdrive and for the clean sound let's listen <laughs> So that plate sound sounded absolutely amazing. For the clean tones, we had a little bit of the Boss DC2W to add a little bit of modulation to the sound, then going into the Source Audio Ventress, and again, splitting that stereo, and just having some nice movement from the DC2, and really just almost getting kind of like a, a delay quality almost from the plate, setting it for a little bit more mix and a little bit more decay. And then when we went for more of the overdrive sound, more of that kind of distortion, kind of rhythm tone, tightened it up by just lowering the mix and the decay a little bit and just giving it a little bit smaller feel that just kind of helps jive a little bit better with a little bit more aggressive kind of guitar tones and a little bit more aggressive picking with that right hand. Again, if you want to have this sound, it will be available as part of the Nero app and it's a part of the Nero community and you can search for it. Again, I'll have the name in the description and above with a picture because we're still kind of naming some of these presets as we go along and upload them as we're recording the video. So you'll have that all available to you and you just search under that name, you'll be able to find it and upload it to your Ventress on your own. Let's now go to the hall sound. Now, this is something that I think is really quintessential for a lot of my favorite session players, guys like Mike Landau and Dan Huff utilized Hall quite a bit. And they would do a thing where they would kind of create an ambient texture, almost like a short delay that just kind of decayed out by using the Hall setting, kind of lowering maybe some of the mix and increasing the decay quite a bit. And so it was kind of almost creating like a giant repeat of reverb that kind of just helped insulate everything and almost has the kind of qualities of a delay but it's still technically a reverb. So for this example, we're gonna switch over to a PRS and we're gonna do the song I'm Buzzed off of Michael Landau's first album. And it's kind of a cult classic amongst guitar players. And Michael Landau is a, is a virtuosic player that has played on countless hit records as a session musician, separately from his independent solo, solo records that he's put out. And this is just a great example of really nice hall tone. And for this, we're going to be using, again, the DC2W for a little bit of modulation, which is consistent with that sound. And then going into the Ventress, again, setting that to a hall setting to get that tone. For the PRS guitar, we're going to use a 513, and we're going to set it in an in-between position between the middle and bridge pickup, just to kind of make it more kind of in alignment with what you would have heard for that original sound. And of course, it's in drop D just as I'm Buzz, the original song was recorded. So let's have a listen to that, bring Ben back in, and let's hear a little bit of what the Hall reverb sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Love that song. Sounds absolutely great. If you're not aware of Michael Landau's recordings, definitely check it out. That song's called I'm Buzzed. It's one of the classics. And again, most guitar players that are kind of guitar players, guitar players know who this guy is and definitely are trying to emulate his tones and sounds. Sounds absolutely amazing. DC2W was great. Getting that going into the source audio and just kind of giving it a little bit more body and width, almost like a delay, even though it was a hall setting. Just sounds absolutely amazing. And again, if you want this exact same sound, it's available through the Neuro app, whether it's on your phone or desktop. We have it all available. I'll have it named below and named above so you can find this exact setting if you want to, again, put this on to your Ventress Reverb. For the last sound today, we're going to go with Spring. And Spring Reverb is one of those things where I feel like it's really hard for a lot of digital reverbs to fully emulate kind of the analog nature of a spring reverb tank. And there are some companies that have done quite well with it. I think many would argue the Strymon Flint is quite a good one. Also the Boss collaboration with Fender where they kind of recreated a 63 reverb tank is also a really great one. I also really love the Source Audio True Spring, which is kind of the spring sound out of the Ventress, but just set as its own individual pedal. All of those are really great, but I really feel like this is a cut above the rest of them and also incorporates you know, 12 total reverb sounds within the same unit. And I actually think it sounds absolutely great for this application. And the song that we're gonna use today for this example is Yellow Leadbetter from Pearl Jam. And I believe that this was recorded with just a Strat and a Super Reverb. And we're gonna kind of go simple just like that for this example as well. We're gonna pull out my 50s Custom Shop Strat. We're gonna go into the Source Audio Ventress, set to spring, and have that go stereo into the amps. Bring up the amps a little bit just to get a little bit more natural compression and maybe a little bit more chime and grit to them. And just let the amps and the reverb and the guitar do all the work on this one. So let's hear a little bit of Yellow Lead better. Let's see how the sounds kind of recreating that classic Pearl Jam sound. I think that that sounded absolutely amazing. And the thing that really differentiates this to me is just how you can create sort of the type of spring reverb that you want through the Neuro app. Of course, as we know, there are different spring reverbs depending on what size cabinet you have. A Princeton reverb is a different length reverb tank than it would be from say a twin or a super reverb because the the whole cabinets are different sizes so you can recreate some of these things differently depending on the vibe that you want to go for and the type of reverb sound that you want out of your amplifier and if you want the sound it's available through the neuro app to the community and again we'll have it named above here next to me and below in the description if you want to search for this and upload this to your ventress if you want to have this exact same spring reverb sound that you heard us demonstrate here for yellow lead better i think you've heard today that this is an absolutely incredible pedal. You know that I love, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, I love the Lexicon chips that are inside the RV7 and then some of its offshoots like the Polara and the Supernatural. Of course, they have some drawbacks in that they don't have MIDI, they don't have presets. You can't select between the different modes of reverb in any other way except manually reaching down and turning the knob. Something like the Ventress offers you some of those classic tones designed by a guy that came up during a generation where those lexicon reverbs were the gold standard and he was recreating those types of sounds for Kurzweil and their various pieces of equipment that they manufactured guys like Bob Chidlaw who have been there were at Kurzweil are now over at Source Audio are absolute experts in being able to recreate an algorithm that represents those tones effectively and clearly you've heard here that it's been able to do that I can't recommend this pedal more highly and I can't wait to integrate this as part of my wet dry wet rig to really make it just even more comprehensive and representative of those tones and being able to integrate it with my switcher in a way that doesn't require me to have multiple reverbs. In some of my rigs, I've actually had to use two RV7s in order to be able to facilitate two different sounds because I don't have the ability for presets. This thing delivers 100% and really delivering that lexicon kind of PCM era sound. And I feel like we've been able to demonstrate that through a variety of guitars, a couple of different classic sounds, and going through some of those classic reverb tones like you would have heard on a lot of hit records, whether that be Room, Hall, Plate, or Spring. 
the Ventress does it in spades. If you want to get this pedal, I highly recommend that you check it out with our friends over at Sweetwater. We have some links below for places that you can purchase this. This was not sponsored at all by Source Audio. It was just a way to give back to some of you that were requesting alternatives to some of the reverbs that we've been suggesting and evangelizing for years again with the Digitech Hardwire RV7 and some alternatives that can kind of get you modern amenities with those classic 80s rack reverb tones. And if you like this video and you want to support us even further, head over to the Vertex FX website. We have a list of all of our dealers available there that sell all of our products that goes a long way in supporting us. And we even use some of our own pedals today to sort of supplement and augment some of the tones like the Ultraphonics on that Steve Perry example. Also, another way to support us, if you want to get some great custom-made guitar cables like we use today to wire everything up and get all the tones into the amps and into our DAW, you can order custom guitar cables and patch cables over from the rigdr.com, an easy way to get the exact length that you want, custom ends, whether they be straight or right angle, with a couple of different varieties of guitar cables, whether it's going to be an input or output cable, that's all available on the rigdr.com. And a free way to support us is go and listen to our podcast, the Chairman of the Boards podcast. We have a separate channel for that, as well as all the podcatchers out there, whether it be Apple or Spotify, you can listen to us for free, irrespective of wherever you get your particular podcast and listen to them on your commute to or from work. And it's a roundtable discussion that I do on that podcast every week with Brian O'Million from A Million Audio and Grant Claston from Goodwood Audio. We talk about tone, pedal board, and best practices. And it's a really great approximately one hour listen that releases every Monday. So that was the Source Audio Ventress. Again, just an amazing reverb that really just takes on the spirit of those classic rack reverbs from the 80s it sounds absolutely amazing and i highly recommend that you check out one if you like that era of reverb sounds as much as i do it's well designed it sounds great and i can't recommend it more highly until next time i'm mason marangella from vertex effects aka the rig doctor see you later mm -hmm.